A short interview with the former head of Tesla's supply chain, Tesla Energy plus beer equals sustainable beer, the Takata airbag recall hits Tesla, and more. Here are your Tesla tidbits for January 18th, 2017. A story from the Automotive News has a short interview with the former head of the Tesla supply chain, Peter Carlson. Carlson was responsible for the Model S and Model X supply chains before leaving the company in 2015 to form a battery company. He reveals in the interview that early on it was hard to get suppliers on board because they didn't have relationships to rely on or the history of volumes of orders. It was very much a trust earning exercise. On top of that, having the main factory in California, while helpful from an engineering standpoint, was terrible for supply, adding both cost and complexity. The most important part of the article, though, is his quote on Model 3. When asked what the supply chain outlook for Model 3 was, Carlson responded, quote, Things will get a bit easier. Tesla has resolved some issues through vertical integration, doing things internally. And with the mo- launch of Model 3, the volumes of the business will be more attractive, and I think we will see more suppliers relocate, end quote. Certainly a vote of confidence for us Model 3 reservation holders who hope to get our cars on time. I've covered an island and a resort using Solar Plus Tesla to provide a cheaper, more sustainable future, and now I've got a brewery. And this one in particular is near and dear to me as I quite enjoy the product of Sierra Nevada Brewing Company. Electric reports that they have teamed with Tesla to install a 500 kilowatt, 1 megawatt hour power pack 2 system paired with a near 11,000 panel solar array. The EPA already named the brewer the Green Business of the Year in 2010, and this installation should put it in the running for the award again for sure. Electric also reports that Tesla hasn't escaped the industry airbag issue from Takata. Tesla began reaching out to early Model S owners via email saying, quote, Tesla will replace the passenger airbags in all 2012 Model S vehicles globally. The safety of our customers is paramount, and Tesla is taking this action even though there have been no airbag ruptures or related incidents in any of its vehicles, end quote. Also in the email, Tesla noted, quote, Although the current recall only applies to 2012 Model S vehicles, the passenger airbags of all Model S vehicles produced through late 2016 are expected to eventually be recalled. If you own a Model S produced between 2013 and 2016, your airbags are safe, and you do not need to take any action until you receive further notice from Tesla. As noted by the NHTSA, customers do not need to be concerned about Takata inflators before they receive a recall notice. Nevertheless, for convenience and for peace of mind, Tesla will make every effort to proactively replace the airbags of all affected vehicles even before they are recalled. This will be performed as part supply allows, and at this time you do not need to take any action, end quote. So all but the most recent Model S's will be recalled. If you're an owner that took delivery before the second half of 2016, I'd expect to get a call from Tesla at some point for this recall. Note that Roadster and Model X are unaffected by the recall. I reported earlier on Tesla reducing power to performance vehicles after a, shall we say, spirited use of the car's performance. This had many folks upset, as there was no warning that this would occur. However, as Tesla is wont to do, they are doing the right thing and rolling it back soon. In a thread on Tesla Motors Club, the president of sales and service, John McNeil, posted about the changes. Quote, Based on your input, we have decided to remove all software performance reductions tied to frequent max power usage. These changes will roll out with our next software update in about three weeks. End quote. He later added that, quote, We had put these reductions in place to proactively protect the powertrain from wear and tear. Instead, we will monitor the condition of the powertrain and let our customers know if service is needed so that we can take proactive steps, such as by replacing parts, if necessary, to maintain the vehicle's performance, end quote. Now, this is very interesting and yet completely appropriate. Tesla is knowingly rolling back protections that could very much cost them money down the road. If they truly believe that this will cause problems down the road, they are definitely acting against their own interest. At the same time, I would argue that they shouldn't have provided this kind of performance if the hardware couldn't hold up to this type of use. You'd almost expect that they'll provide some warnings to the owners as the monitoring they're performing picks up degradation to the car's systems. It would be the best possible compromise, as it would allow owners to use their cars as they wish, but knowing that it could be breaking the car in the end. 
Finally, we end up with some good news out of the UK. Inside EVs has reported that plug-in vehicle sales are up 30% in 2016. While these numbers include plugging all plug-in cars, not just EVs, it's a good trend to see for our friends in the UK. Hopefully it's a sign of bigger things to come. Check out the links to today's full stories in the show description. If you get some value out of the show, please consider supporting me at patreon.com slash Tibbits. Thanks so much to my super patrons, John Waltower, Drew Schuyler, and Cookie UK for their support at the $10 plus level. Also, thanks very much to my newest patron, KJ Diada. As usual, though, if you have nothing to spare, no worries at all, friends. You can still support the show for free with positive reviews and by spreading word of the show. If you have feedback for me, the best way to be heard is to tweet at Tesla Tidbits. That's it for today. I'll see you back here again tomorrow. Until then, keep it charged and hit the road.